Hey guys, in the video I have for you today, this is a commercial call that I have been to before. Some of you may recognize this. About a year ago, I requested permission to withdraw all the refrigerant and go back with Virgin Freon. So we are now a year later and they're having similar problems. And today I kind of came up with something totally different now that I know that the Freon is not mixed. So stay tuned. Here we go. y'all can hear this thing sounds like it's about to go out on high head pressure sounds rough oh so I lifted it up look at that pressure is bypassed we have a low pressure let's check pressures on it that coal doesn't look too filthy well I don't suspect that this compressor sounds odd though Why does this app want to send me notifications? That's a low pressure. Three or four. This is an R22 unit. Mm, high head pressure, low suction. I'm gonna check superheat and subcooling. Ooh, that compressor is hot. Because I'm getting the feeling that this problem is a little more complicated than just a metering device. Right, that's below freezing 29 degrees 46 degrees sub cooling <clears throat> mm. 
that head pressure is high for an R22 system you expect something like 225 high 250 but that makes me think that's not R22 in there I got really high subcooling moderately high superheat mm. okay it just cycled off Head pressure is bypassed. I don't know anybody in Phoenix, Arizona. Maybe my low pressure has it has it open. In the meantime, let, let's take take my tool bag inside and see if we can't see what kind of metering device we have. Okay, no, it seems to have cycled off. in the world you'll see that all right this is a four ton this is the bigger side there's two sides to this building and it's a four ton and the larger side has a five. The smaller size has a five. All right, let's see if we can see what kind of metering device we have. see what we got that did not help me any 
we're gonna have to do that again camera turn this around all right start the video Let's take a look at that. Alright, I'm seeing a capillary tube that feeds around to the other side. And I bet they come around come out of this. guys according to my records that is not r22 that's 422b which puts it above freezing <clears throat> but let's um let's try to do some temperature all right it's about 80 degrees in there and i'm getting close to a 12 degree temperature drop which is not good enough. Y'all see that for 422B, this is 44 degrees subcooling, 18 degrees superheat. I mean, I could live with that superheat. What I found out in there is we have a 3 8 line that feeds capillary tubes there's four larger capillary tubes it goes into a bulb and the four capillary tubes come out so we have a capillary tube system and right now it's kind of acting like the coil is too small for the condenser I mean, that's kind of what those numbers are telling me. I guess we could have a restriction in that coal. Either way, it would mean replacing the coal. I didn't see an iced up capillary tube or anything like that. All four were sweating. <laughs> well, I guess they don't need to be replaced, but it's close to it. Twenty six wide. too deep and we got plenty of room and height we got 33 inches mm. what I'm thinking about is just reusing this box and putting a coil in here just cut it open all along the edges Pull the coil out from the back. Of course, undo the flue pipe and take this cover off. I don't think I can get the coil out through here. Put in a new one, pipe it in. I really think, I think that would work. I hope you enjoyed that little video. That furnace that is on that thing seems to last forever but i gave them two estimates one for a new coil with the r22 conversion kit on it 
and basically, like I said, cutting open the back, sliding it out. And another estimate for entirely new system, condenser, coil, and furnace. Might as well give the estimate, you never know. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, how about like and subscribe? And I'll catch you on the next one.